and uh, honored to be here. Usually I'm stuck giving the medical therapy talk, so uh, Minaj, thank you for taking that one. I get to do the cool one this year. Um, so I'm gonna be talking about two new technologies, actually, the uh, Jedi and the Wolf. Um, hopefully you guys have seen a little bit about this. These are my disclosures. I am the uh, national PI in the Wolf uh, Pomeramblism uh, study, so that's my main disclosure here. So we all heard about why we need new devices and new approaches to treating this disorder. Um, Two million DVTs a year. We talk a lot about the right side PE these days, but on the left, we see how many patients uh, really suffer from PTS. And not only this is a, a morbid um, condition, but this is also a costly condition. We can see the amount of um, healthcare spending that is done for VTE in general. So, you know, there's a lot of limitations with anticoagulation alone. And again, we just saw a really nice presentation on the clot retriever. But things that I like to think about, there's no intrinsic thrombolytic properties with an anticoagulant. So it will not dissolve a thrombus. Veins have limited capacity to dissolve thrombus. And so we know that spontaneous thrombolysis occurs infrequently. Some will quote as low as 10%. And patency and function of involved veins rarely return to normal. So we saw in that last case that that patient was lucky that there wasn't a ton of remodeling of that vein yet. But most often, we see very diseased, fibrotic, webbed veins, valvular dis uh, dysfunction, and it's hard to restore that uh, naturally. So it's important for us to think about why we need to move to a procedural approach for DVT, and we need some new tools. So I'm going to present that to you right now. You know, the current devices outside of the clot retriever, we, we talk mostly about thrombolytics, you know, and we know that thrombolytics like um, Andrew Jet and others can increase bleeding. Um, the sharing of red blood cells can cause acute kidney injury. There could be some delays. Um, to improvement in symptoms and then resources. You know, this became a really hot topic during COVID-19 is how do we keep people out of the ICU? How do we keep people from dwelling on thrombolytics overnight? So we know that mechanical thrombectomy solves a lot of these single session, minimal blood loss, and potentially more clot, um, complete clot removal. So one of the new kids on the block, I'm an 80s kid, so you're stuck with this figure. Um, the Wolf Thrum Back to Be platform. So this is really cool. I'm going to give you a couple of videos here because I don't even need to hear me speak. I'll let it speak for itself. But the idea here is um, for a mechanical extraction of clot, whether DVT or PE. Um, and so this device has these fingers you'll see in a moment that can actually um, grab the clot, bring it into the sleeve, and remove both soft and organized clot. And it's nice. There's no capital equipment. It comes to one um, platform, and you can get really controlled immediate results. Um, and this is kind of what the um, first design of the catheter is going to look like. Now, this is really in its early infancy. It's going to go into a trial, but pretty much straight from the bench side. So you can see the nice funnel here that you can direct towards the clot. Um, this is primarily the DVT um, device. There's a PE one. And then there's this sleeve I'll show you in a moment in the back with the catheter that um, involutes the clot and removes it from the body. There is an aspiration syringe with this. So you can still do some aspiration as well. So it's a combination device um, for the treatment um, of both soft and more organized clot. Um, so this is just a little primer of what the um, the device looks like on the table. So you can see that's the, the Devortex sleeve. So you'll see it in action in a moment, and that's the funnel. So that sleeve goes in the funnel. They're going to show you here how you can tuck that sleeve into um, this funnel. Um, this is not me, so I apologize to fumbling here. And then... Um, you can see in a moment they're going to take this pretty fibrotic clot um, and, and they're just engaging it with the probe. So you'll see in a moment and they're going to pull back these tines and I'll show you a closer picture of this. But you can see how this just gets sucked into the catheter, into the sleeve and they're removed from the body. So um, a more effective, I'm going to just highlight this, a more effective, safe and efficient way. So when you look at this compared to competitive devices, um, the thought is it's had 20 to 100 per, uh, times greater clot removal force on bedside testing versus aspiration alone. Again, you get one push with a syringe on most aspiration catheters. Um, I'm going to show you in a moment why this is safe. Um, and again, it works very well on the vessel wall. It's benign and not meant to traumatize the vessel wall. And I think we'll see the efficiency on this in terms of the ability to remove clot quickly from um, the body. Body. So again, here's that same picture in a cartoon where this um, little poker comes in in a moment over a wire. And then I want you guys to see what the uh, fingers look like here. It almost looks like a treadmill or track mill, if you may. Um, and it's just going to bring with these fingers here that clot back into that sleeve. So you see it engage here and now grab that clot back into the sleeve. And so you're going to be pulling out a clot through the sleeve, through the catheter. And then you can reintroduce that sleeve again and go back and remove more clot. So again, no blood loss here. Um, and I'm going to show you in a minute why it's atraumatic to the wall. 
So this is it in uh, in vivo or uh, in vitro. I mean, so this is a, um, a test tube with that same clot here. And you can see what's happening with those little fingers involuting that clot into the catheter. And then here, this is a uh, jugular vein. And so the point here is to show how this can move forward. And then also you can see it kind of moving those fingers again inside there benignly without traumatizing the vessel wall. So this is the thought behind why this can be a really atraumatic approach to clot retrieval is it really is not meant to clip or grab the vessel wall. It's meant to really focus on um, snaring what's in the lumen, which is hopefully going to be clot. So I'm going to end on this and just these two videos to show you the difference between what happens in a soft clot um, and what we struggle with most often, which is those harder subacute um, fibrotic clots and really performs nice. And again, we, we're in the early stages of this device. So you're going to be hearing more about the pulmonary embolism trial and then um, hopefully after that, the DVT trial that comes out. But um, this is probably something that you all want to pay attention to because I do think it adds a nice flavor to what we're doing right now, both in the pulmonary embolism space and the DVT space. So I'm going to move to JEDI. Now, JEDI is commercially available. Um, most of the current iteration of the devices are being used for um, acute limb ischemia on the arterial side, but it is also approved for um, DBT. And then there's exploration for whether this might be a good PE catheter. Um, and so if you're not familiar with this technology, it's got a little bit of a different approach. And again, I think the biggest part of us moving forward in this field is not recreating what's already been done with Inari primarily and aspiration catheters, but iterating and doing something different. So the unique part Part of this catheter is it combines aspiration with this really aggressive saline um, spray here. So you can see that saline jet um, demarcated in the, in the lower right side here. And so this saline jet will spend the um, entire time when on macerating clot as it's being aspirated into the device. So it gives you kind of a two, two prong approach to bringing clot out of the body, both through aggressive aspiration and then um, through a, a power pump. And then also this matter macerating saline jet that will help break up the clot. So the full system looks like this. This is kind of what sits in your lab um, and that's the pump with a, a bag of pretty much saline. Now you could actually spray TPA through this also. Um, so you can hold it, hang a bag with TPA in it and actually pulse spray if you wanted to. The goal is obviously to try to avoid thrombolytics if, if you can, but you do have that option because you have control of what's coming out of that saline hose. Um, so again, this is a nice figure. I tried to cut it down a little bit for um, timing sake, but you'll see that's the aspiration lumen. So you're going to bring that catheter up to the clot um, and then you're going to approach it with both that saline jet on and then the aspiration power pump on. And you'll see in a moment here that it starts to suck the clot in and then macerate and break up that clot. So this is, this is what it looks like in a cartoon. So I'm going to show you a little bit of data and then I'm going to show you a case real quick. So the nice thing about this device compared to the Wolf is that there's actually been a fair amount of publications on this. Um, Mahmoud Razavi um, really has led the way in terms of generating the evidence behind this catheter and, and then it was acquired by Abbott Vascular um, I think about a, a year or so ago. But really the nice thing about this device is it's proven um, to really be beneficial as a single session device um, with few major adverse events, particularly after 30 days. So I'm going to focus primarily on, on DVT data right now but this is one of their pilot um, prospective studies. Um, they went back and they did this in a more diverse uh, study population. And you can see 100% procedure success rate with significant amount of thrombus reduction. And again, I think focusing on that single section, uh, single session success rate is really important. And lastly, this is um, one of the more um, recent studies out. Again, uh, three studies really generating high level data that this is a successful device that can be used um, in a single treatment. So here's a, a quick case to end my session. Um, it's not live, I apologize, but here's a nice um, phlegmasia case. You can see uh, the swollen leg on the left here with a complete occlusion um, of the venous system here. And so when you bring down this device, again, I don't have the, the live images here, um, you're going to be either approached from retro or you could come from pop either way. So it moves pretty nicely through the system so you could come up and over. And again, you're com combining that aspiration and the saline jet to break up the clot. And I just wanted to show you what comes out of the catheter. So it's just really fragmented thrombus. You can see this is nice red, red clot, um, but it comes out really in, in, in these small pieces into the jet. So it really breaks it up nicely and allows for uh, successful treatment. And people have been using a lot on acute limb ischemia also so if you do do arterial work as well this is probably the only catheter that has um, outside of penumbra that really has an indication for both arterial and venous intervention so thank you very much i hope uh that was uh a little bit lively and uh i give it to my friend who can talk about anticoagulants now so thank you very much thank you.